The NBA draft is in one week, uh, one week from today, Thursday the 23rd, and teams are finally starting to focus on that. We have uh, Game 6 of the Finals tonight. Who knows if there will be a Game 7 this weekend. We'll see. But we've got our first trade of the draft season, and it's a good one, honestly. It's a really good one for, for the team, for both teams involved. So the Dallas Mavericks are acquiring Christian Wood from the Houston Rockets for the 26th pick in next Thursday's draft, along with Boban Marjanovic, Sterling Brown, Trey Burke, and Marquise Chris. Marquise Chris just underwent surgery, and he's going to be recovering for the next few months. Uh, Sterling Brown, Trey Burke didn't really play a whole lot for Dallas, especially like as they made that playoff run. And then Boban didn't really play, but kind of hurts because... Uh, he just he builds these relationships with all of his teammates and it's like just like sad to watch like that split up. So like he obviously had the connection with Tobias Harris um, across multiple teams and then they split up and that was sad. But then his connection with Luka Doncic has been really like nice and wholesome and, and cool to watch. Um, and I know they probably don't make this move without running it by Luka. So I'm sure like he's like, okay. But, like, it's just such an odd, like, Boban's such an odd player to put in. And I'm sure he's going to connect really well with, you know, the young players on the Rockets, like Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green, Josh Christopher. Like, all those guys are probably going to get along really well with Boban because he's one of those team chemistry guys. But to bring in someone like Christian Wood, um, that is huge for the Mavericks. I thought they would be one of those teams that might be trying to sniff around DeAndre Ayton, um, but or even Rudy Gobert. There was a popular Gobert to Dallas uh, rumor for a while there, but Christian Wood is a more affordable, arguably better option for the Mavericks than both of those guys. Uh, you get the the better deal, and that's one thing. But Christian Wood in Houston um, at the start of his time with the Rockets looked like a completely reformed and completely different player from his Detroit days. He was out there attacking the boards. He was an offensive threat. He was basically a double-double night in, night out. And he really was, like, the perfect pick-and-roll partner for, you know, those young guards, for John Wall when Houston was playing John Wall. And before the Harden trade with uh, Houston and Brooklyn, like, they had a nice little core going there with the three of those guys. So to put him in Dallas with Luka... It's going to give Luka another floor-stretching option because Christian Wood can step out and hit those outside shots, but it's going to give him that rim-running, uh, basically, partner. It's going to give him that pick-and-roll partner that he can, you know, kind of recreate the pick-and-pop or he can, you know, really create more out of the paint. And it's going to hopefully also open up those other shooters for Dallas to get a little bit more, um, a little bit more space because what happened with Dallas at the end of their their playoff run this year was they kind of just ran out of gas. They were they weren't able to hit those shots and the Warriors were. And that was pretty much that. It um it's going to be really interesting to see what these guys what they all look like together. It feels like Dallas has another move in them. Like I'm sure it's going to be something to do with either Dinwiddie or Jalen Brunson. Um cuz I don't think it makes sense to keep both of them, but We'll see what happens. Um, I would imagine they might be targeting like another a, a wing type player, some like a Bridges or like a Miles Bridges, I should say, or a PJ Washington or like I don't know why just Hornets, but um, it just it feels like it's going to be like this isn't the last trade for Dallas, and I love this move for them. I think it's going to help them out a ton. I think it's going to give Luca a lot of help in terms of playmaking. Not like he really needed it. But it, it solves the center position for Dallas without having to overpay on a Gobert or on a um, DeAndre Ayton and like giving up more than you would want to in a trade or a sign-in trade. And so this, you know, there, it's sad to see Boban go. But otherwise, these players weren't really, you know, doing much for, for Dallas. They, they have kind of redundancies with these positions. They have players that are that are going to fill these roles. So it works out great. And for Houston, this is going to be huge for them because not because the 26th pick is going to be anything, but this trading Christian Wood clears the, the runway for um, Sengun 
to start at center, and that's going to be huge because he did look very good in his uh, in his time on the court with the young players. But this also means whoever Houston takes with the third pick next week in the draft, they're probably going to start right away because they're looking at either... Like, all reports now say it's probably going to be Jaden Ivey first to the Magic, then Chet Holmgren to the Thunder at two, and then the Rockets would get Paulo Bancaro uh, at three. Now, it's going to be some order like that, most likely. It's going to be those three players in some order. But either way, the Rockets are probably coming out with a four or a five. And clearing out Christian Wood gives them the chance to plug that player in right away and see what they have with this young, talented team, and just kind of go from there. And I really like the, a lot of the players on this Rockets team. I really enjoy Kevin Porter Jr.'s game. I think Jalen Green is going to take a leap. I enjoy Josh Christopher. I like Sangoon. I, like, I really think this is going to be one of those teams that, um, that can not like have a huge turnaround in one year, but I think they're going to become a really good league pass team. Um, and to clear out this space, to clear out Christian Wood, who was obviously not happy um, the last little bit, I believe they had been trying to trade him before now as well, like in the season. But to get a first round pick for him from Dallas, even if it is a late first, like you had an unhappy player and you're able to get a first round pick and you clear uh, his contract and you get playing time for your younger players to kind of see more about what you have. Like, this was just, to me, this is just an all-around win for the Rockets. Um, I'll be really curious to see who they end up with in the draft, but I think, like, no matter what, they're probably in the best position because picking third in a three-player draft, like, you're going to get who you get, and no one can be like, well, why'd you take him? Because, like, there's three pretty much, like, top players here, and whoever Orlando or Oklahoma takes, it's going to be like, well, maybe they should have taken the other one. But with Houston, the only thing they would have to worry about is like those later picks being better. But as far as like getting the pick right in the moment, they they kind of have no pressure on them. They're going to be able to take whoever they want and it, or whoever's there, and it's going to be fine because that was the best available, of course. So I think if it's someone like Paulo, it's going to be huge for um, the playmaking side of Jalen Green. Uh, Kevin Porter Jr. as well, but it kind of felt like from everything I've heard so far this offseason that Jalen Green uh, wants to take a step as a playmaker. So if he's if he's got someone like Paulo or even I don't see Chad Holmgren falling to third, but someone like that would be huge um, for their development, for the, just the offensive flow of the Rockets. Uh, kind of helps eliminate that, okay, your turn, okay, my turn, okay, you, okay, let's go, now you, now me. Um, it really helps to kind of get like a flowing offense going. Um, really though, this trade is going to be in the moment about the Mavericks because they addressed one of their biggest needs and they did it in a really smart economical way. Um, like I said, Boban does, that does sacrifice team chemistry a bit, but at the same time, like, you, you know, you went out and got, you were so close this year. And that was basically without any of those players playing, without any of the players that Dallas gave up playing. They went and got and improved their team, you know, for almost nothing, no impact to what they currently have. So I'm really curious to see what they have planned next. I'm really curious to see what other moves are coming, uh, not just for Dallas, but in general as we get even closer to the draft, because I think it's going to start probably as soon as the finals are over. Like if the Warriors win tonight and that's it, tomorrow I could start to see like the trades flying off. So let me know what you think about this trade. If you're a Mavericks fan or if you're a Rockets fan, please let me know in the comments how you feel about uh, what your team got in this deal. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the game tonight, and uh, see you soon.